like that, and it starts charging wirelessly. How freaking cool is that? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about my experience whilst using the brand new iPhone 14 Pro. So if you haven't seen my unboxing video of my brand new iPhone 14 Pro, you can click somewhere on the screen right now and I'll have it also linked in the description. In the video, I did mention some cool features and I did have like a little bit of a review and a camera review of it. But there were some things that I didn't think I would actually like and enjoy and I wanted to show you some cool underrated features. So starting off with the always on display, which I have right now. At first I didn't like it because I was thinking if I don't have the screen on, then why would I need the screen to be on? If I'm not using the phone, why would I need the screen to be on? You know what I mean? And yeah, you can see the screen just dim and yeah, it looks really good. And I really, really like it. It's coming a lot in handy because I'll be on my laptop and I'll have my phone next to me and I can just see the time just by looking at it and the date. But another underrated feature, which has been around since the iPhone 12, which is MagSafe. As you can see, I have this little ring around on my case. And I do have a MagSafe charger is right over here and it just looks really satisfying to put it on and you can see the little charging and that has a little sound. I also have a MagSafe battery pack uh, power bank so it charges via the lightning and then you can magnetically connect it like that and it starts charging wirelessly. How freaking cool is that? This feature is actually so freaking cool. I actually made a TikTok about it and it went freaking viral. It's currently at 8.2 million views and 1.4 million likes and it was about the night mode feature on the iPhone 14 Pro. Now night mode has been around since the iPhone 11 but it's only gotten better since and I took a screen recording of how I take like a 30 second exposure using the night mode camera and I had my phone on a tripod. I was in Tasmania when I was on my holiday you're probably gonna see the Tasmania vlog after this video but I ended up taking a long exposure photo of the southern lights in Tasmania what that is so freaking cool I never thought I would have ever seen the northern lights let alone the southern lights another underrated feature is only on the iPhone 14 and 14 Pro is the action mode oh my god the quality is freaking insane it stabilizes it perfectly obviously the stabilization on the phone is already really good but to have it as like a feature like it be mega super stabilized it's, it's insane it's really really good even when I'm filming on roller coasters if you've seen my last vlog when I was at the Easter show. I filmed it on roller coasters and it was super stabilized. But yeah, those are just some of the cool features and there are so many more but those are just some of the cool underrated features and I just love and I didn't think I'd love it this much but I absolutely do. Okay, so other than the really cool underrated features, there are some overhyped features, as in features that were really, really cool that I thought was going to be like so life-changing. The number one feature that was hyped up so much about the 14 Pro only was the 48 megapixels camera. So the 48 megapixel camera only works if you are using it in RAW, and you actually have to turn it on in settings. You don't, it's not automatically set up, and it's not that much better. Like the quality is really good, but you don't really notice the good quality unless you like crop the image and zoom all the way in and then you can kind of tell that the quality is a lot better but so that's why I haven't really used it that much another thing is that it takes up way more storage from the normal 12 megapixels quality it usually takes about like one to five megabytes per photo but with the 48 megapixels camera it takes about 50 to 100 megabytes per photo so keep that in mind and make sure you don't use it on every single photo because your phone storage will run out instantly there was a feature hyped up about the new iPhone 14 was the emergency SOS satellite Meaning that if you have been hiking or you're in the desert somewhere you get lost That's what the ad was saying and you don't have like Wi-Fi or any service Then you can use the satellite in the sky to call for emergency or like message for emergency services If you're like injured or lost which sounds really great But even if I did want to use it and I did get lost I couldn't use it anyway because it's only available in the US US and in Canada, not in Australia. So, don't even know if I could use it or not, even if I do get lost. And lastly, I think the number one kind of overhyped feature is the dynamic islands. The number one cool feature, kind of signifying that you have the new iPhone 14 Pro and Pro only, is if you have this cool little pill shaped notch at the top of your screen. It does move, it does. The reason why they call it a dynamic island instead of just it being a notch is that it is. 
interactive like you can touch on it if you have music playing it has like little pop-ups and like you can see the album cover and see like the sound waves you can press on it and then choose to pause and play it you can tap on it and it goes opens into the music app if you have a timer playing you can see the countdown and you can tap on it you can have multiple things using it as much as it is really cool it's not like worth buying the new phone just because of that you know what i mean and unfortunately, there are three things that I do not like about the new phone, unfortunately I have to say that. First of all, when I first had the phone, and I was in the middle of like setting it up, so I stopped recording, I was in the middle of um, the unboxing video, I opened Snapchat, and then the camera starts shaking and vibrating violently. I had actually took a video, luckily I was filming it because I filmed on the camera, you can see the camera shaking, I was literally in the middle and I was just looking at it like what the actual I turned the camera around. So yeah, that was so freaking creepy. Um, I thought I was the only one. I was like, oh my god, it's not even like two hours old. So it's not just like a little glitch. This is like the actual camera itself was shaking violently. Like, what? But luckily, it wasn't just me that experienced it. Um, there was multiple other people on like TikTok and YouTube and Instagram posting videos of their camera shaking either on Instagram, on TikTok, or Snapchat as well like me and not on the regular camera. So apparently there was a bug with the 48 megapixel camera not supporting any of the third party apps and Apple has released an update and fixed the problem. So I did have to go to Apple and get a brand new phone again. So this phone isn't technically the phone that I unboxed in the unboxing video. It was a bit of a downside. It did mean that I had to like reset my whole phone again because I had to like restore this one and then transfer everything over to the new one and it just meant that the experience of the phone within less than one week was just had to get everything restored everything so it was a bit of an inconvenience and that wouldn't have happened if they didn't fix that one problem before it was released so i do have to mention that here in this video and another thing that i don't like about the camera is that sometimes when you take photos whether in dark lighting or bright lighting it automatically edits the photos afterwards sometimes when i'm taking photos of cool sunsets when it automatically edits, it just overexposes the sunset a little bit so you don't really see like the cool colours and the full potential of the sunset. And I've seen some people on TikTok talk about this and then what they do to fix the problems is to open the photo after they've taken it and then taken a screenshot so that I can keep the before it edits the photo. So it's just like a stupid little thing. Like I wish there was a feature where you can like, choose to have it on and off just like the 48 megapixel camera. You can choose if you want to have to take the photo in the high resolution or not. I wish there was a way to choose if you wanted to have this automatic edit playing or not but yeah that just kind of happens and it kind of pisses me off sometimes because sometimes there are really good photos that I want to take and it just fixes it but not in a good way and my old phone didn't do that and lastly I feel like I just have to mention it anyway is they got rid of 3d touch if you don't know what 3d touch is it's been around since 2015 with the iPhone 6s till the iPhone 10s in 2018 which was the last phone with 3d touch thankfully I had it because I love 3d touch so much it's basically the part of the screen that's pressure sensitive so it knows if you're pressing on the screen versus just touching it I'll give you a little demonstration Let's bring up my old phone. These are some of the captions I have. If I wanted to delete something, let's say I was typing something and I wanted to delete this one, I can 3D touch anywhere on the keyboard, just like pressing onto it, and you get this cool little cursor. And while holding on the screen, I can like 3D touch a little bit, press a little bit harder, and then highlight something. Let's say I didn't highlight it properly, I wanted to highlight going up and get rid of that. 3D touch while still holding on the screen, never let, letting it go, and then 3D touch again press a little harder and you, I can get rid of going up if I wanted to delete that or not and then on the new phone they don't have that well the only way you can get the cursor is by holding onto the space bar just by holding onto it you get the cursor but you don't get the 3d touch option because there's no 3d touch on the phone it was just really cool and they got rid of it and i really really liked 3d touch anyways if you found this video really helpful let me know in the comment section below what phone you currently have now if you're planning to upgrade or if you're just gonna stick around and wait for the 15 to come out in a few months if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe it would really help my channel out so you can also watch my unboxing videos i'll have them linked in the description anyways thanks see ya bye